Hello, welcome. My name is Tina. This is Simply in Stitches. And last time I made a knitting video, I was talking about the toaster tea because I'd cast on and the gauge was wrong because I hadn't done a gauge swatch. So <laughs> yeah, this is the toaster tea by Rebecca Clo, and it's a lovely pattern. I've knit it before and it's plain with raglan sleeves so you can do anything you want so you can do it just a plain tee or you can just do any sort of eyelets or anything there's lots of different variations that people have done so i had this yarn which is drops cotton merino and it's in cherry red and so i thought that would make a nice long sleeve tee because it's DK weight, I wanted to go for more of a longer sleeve, just below the elbow, rather than the t-shirt. So I cast on, because I got gauged last time, I just cast on and got on with it. And it wasn't until I got this far <laughs> that I realised that my gauge was completely out and I needed to go for larger needles. So I just swapped the needles over and tried again and it was about the right gauge. So what I'm going to have to do is take it right back and then start this part again, which is fine. But I just thought it might be just an interesting little video to just go through what I'm doing, what differences I make to the pattern. And if you're thinking, if you haven't made a garment before and you're thinking, what does it entail? Then this isn't a tutorial. It's just the life of how this becomes this. <laughs> Hopefully there's a picture of me wearing <laughs> the said garment if everything goes to plan. So yes, I have got, I think I've got three, how many grams have I got? One, two, three, four, three, six seven i've got seven 50 gram balls which is 350 grams and so yeah let's see because i want to make it a little bit longer not only in the sleeve but also in the body so we see how far this stretches um so yeah the last one i knit was in a cotton yarn <laughs> so um that was a total different there's no point weighing that because I'm not going to know still because it's going to be different to what this is. So did I tell you the what the actual ingredients is? I don't think I did. So this is Drops Cotton Merino and it is in the colour Cherry Red, which is 06 because I don't have names on it. And it's machine washable and it's 50% wool, 50% cotton. So it feels really lovely and soft next to skin, really lovely. So yeah, hopefully this will make a nice sort of warmer weather sweater, just nice open one to throw on. So what I did for the neck, because this can come up bigger than I really want it, it can come up quite wide. So before I put on less stitches and then increased after the rib. But this time I thought, why don't I try to actually just go down the needle size. So I, I cast on on the 3.5 and I'm going to take the needles out of this if I'm ripping back anyway. And I shall see how that sits around my neck. Now, full disclosure, I have got a pin head and a scrawny little neck so <laughs> i'm not telling anyone else what to do because <laughs> we've all got different size and shape heads and necks so um i'm not worried about it being too small because i know what my head will fit in so see if i can get it over the glasses easily <laughs> so yes that is plenty big enough. It's actually about the same as my t-shirt, isn't it? So yeah, that's nice. So I'm gonna keep that. So it is just 3.5, as instructed, cast on, but 3.5 millimeter needles. And then it's just one by rum rib. So I'm going to pull it back to, I'll probably go 
into the rib so that I can change it then I think that'll be better than start from there so yeah I'm gonna do a bit of reverse knitting and put some six millimeter needles in instead of the five <laughs> I'll be back with you in a minute well we have far less than we had before <laughs> so not exactly progress but I'm back on track so I've taken it right back to the rib and I've put my markers in for my raglan increases so now I need to do the short row shaping so I'm going to take myself outside and concentrate to do the short rows um, not my favourite thing to do but oh, just dropped my arm <laughs> yeah got a nice ball of yarn it was a whole 50 grams of that to take back <laughs> so oh well so this is where we are. So yeah, German short rows, here I come. I've completed all my short rows and I've just done another raglan increase going all the way around. And so now I am just starting to do some pearl bumps because I want to do some pearl bumps around here. I don't want to do them all over. I just want to do them at the top part. So when I originally done started the last time I did even gaps about eight rows I think it was between each bumps each row of bumps but I'm thinking it might be nice to increase it so do like four or six then eight then ten that's what I'm thinking so it increases the distance before it finishes but I don't know how many rows I'm going to get in and I would like five because you're always supposed to do odd numbers, aren't you? Like three or five or seven. So, um, yes, we shall see how that works out. So that's where I am now. So I'm thinking about going up to a bigger cable because it's quite full, this one now. Um, so hopefully, if I do this for a couple of hours tonight, and put it onto a bigger cable and then I shall show you in the morning in a moment for you but in the morning for me and we'll see how many rows of bumps I've got and how my raglan increases are doing and how big it is and um, I better test my gauge once again hadn't I because I don't want to go through that again <laughs> and I know it's my own fault and I know I should have done a swatch to start with but I don't do that. <laughs> Why do it the sensible way when you can do it the stupid way and then it doesn't work out? So yes. So I'm quite excited. It's definitely a bigger gauge this time, much more open. So I hope I'm going to like it and just not think it looks too messy as well. That's another thing. I do like a tighter gauge because it looks more even and it looks nicer. But it's nice wearing something that's more open when it's warmer and more drapey so um, breathable so yes we shall see how this turns out fingers crossed well everything has changed around here the weather has turned to windy and raining my hair has gone darker <laughs> and shorter and my knitting has will come to that how the knitting has gone so yes, I'm not so keen on the weather. I'm liking the hair, but I'm waiting for it to go a little bit lighter again. It's gone very dark at the moment. And um, yeah, the knitting is up and down. Let's have a look. So where are we? Oh, I've got all different balls. This isn't good. I don't know what's happened. Let me drop that on the floor. Just drop everything on the floor. Okay, so I have split for the sleeves. I have done three um, pearl ridges on there. I was going to do five, but then I was worried about placement under the arms. I didn't want it to come like the widest part of my bust. I didn't want a row of pearl there. I was doing it a little bit two more rows every one was what I was going to do but I thought no it's not going to work out I'll just leave it at three 
So I was happy with three. And I split for the sleeves. And when I split for the sleeves, I tried it on. Just sorry about the clinking of the needles. I tried it on just to check that the armhole was going to be wide enough. And I thought, do you know what? I'm not loving this. And I'm not loving it because of the open gauge. So now I've hit gauge. I'm not loving it. So I know that I've used a different yarn before and that was fine. So I think it's just maybe this is a thinner DK. But I'm just not loving how it looks. The actual um, straight part now is looking a bit better, but I'm still not loving it. This looks really messy. So yes, it might block out a bit better, but I just prefer a denser gauge. I think that's what I've learned about myself from doing these open gauges, which is disappointing because I have been loving everyone's um, love note tin can knits and I was going to knit one of those. I was going to knit it because that's supposed to be with a um, mohair. I wasn't going to have a mohair. I was going to do it with like an alpaca, DK with alpaca mix because it make it fluffy. But now I don't know. Unless I do it with a drops air, which is an Aran weight, but it's very light. So, but then would that work? I don't know. All I know is I wasn't happy with this and I thought, Tina, just don't do any more of it. I thought I can't do it at a tighter gauge because I'm not going to have enough yarn. I've got enough yarn for a open gauge what it's supposed to be. So I thought, right, what am I going to do then? <laughs> so I thought, what am I going to use this yarn for? Because I love the yarn. I will say though that two of the balls just sort of exploded in the bottom of the bag that I hadn't even touched yet. So I had to sort those out, which was annoying. And also this yarn can be splitty. It does seem to be different. You can get like part of it. And so that's been okay for me because I'm somebody who looks when I'm knitting. But if you're somebody who knits in the cinema or reads a book at the same time, I haven't got that capability. <laughs> but if you do that or crochet, and I know people say they have more trouble crocheting when it's a splitty yarn. So bear that in mind that I do love the softness of this yarn and how it looks, but I would say be aware that it's splitty. So yeah, if that's going to bother you, don't go for this yarn. So going back to what am I going to do with this? Now I thought back when I first got the balls and I held it up like, does this suit my colouring? I thought this would be a really nice scarf for my coat because I've got a blue coat. I thought this would be really nice. And what I was thinking of through winter was what I really want is just a traditional scarf, just a wrap around. What I like to do is fold it double and then you put it through. And I thought that's what I want, just a plain scarf to go with my coat. And I want it so it's long enough that it comes to the bottom of the coat. You can't see my hands, but the bottom of the coat. So if it's just around my neck, it will just fill in that gap there, even without twisting around, it just hang there. But then when, if it's colder and I'm zipping up, that I can do that double and have it just, I call it French style. I don't know what the style is, but where you just loop it and then pull it through. I like that. Just think it looks neat and tidy and it stays where it's supposed to stay. So I thought that's what I want. So I thought, I think being, when you make videos and it's silly, but I know that anybody who makes videos will understand. You think, oh, well, people don't like scarves. People like shawls, so I should do a shawl. But now I'm thinking, no, just do what you want to wear. And I'm trying to build a wardrobe of things that I wear and I enjoy wearing, not just making something for the pleasure of making it but also for what do I drag out and I do notice that a lot of people they make wonderful things and then when you see them on the podcast a lot of the time they're wearing sweatshirts like day to day they're wearing a bought sweatshirt so I want to make like this that 
is the same as a sweatshirt basically and so I'll, that's what I would go for in everyday life I've got a very casual life so I want things that I'm just going to pull out different ones pull out and it's more about the color to me it's more about colors that when I open my wardrobe what colors make me feel happy and wear that so I thought no I'm just going to wear I'm just going to make a boring old scarf <laughs> so that's what I've done <laughs> So I have cast on um, 45 stitches and then I've done, it's all blowing out because of this red, <laughs> sorry, 45 stitch, 45 stitch cast on and then I've done three and a half inches of garter for the ending just to, I think it looks heavier just for the, so the bottoms of the scarf look heavier and when, when it is wrapped around it's going to have that bit of interest and then because I like the pearl bumps with this yarn on what I was doing I thought well I'm going to incorporate a bit of garter through to balance it out so I think I'm showing it up so I've got the garter at the bottom three and a half inches and then I'm doing three and a half inches of stockinette and then garter but what is on my mind, I'm not going to say worrying because it's just knitting, we don't worry about knitting, <laughs> is I've done, I've slipped the first stitch so I've got a nicer edge and then I've done three stitches in garter but I'm wondering if that three stitches isn't enough because as you can see it's folding round. So what I've decided to do before I go any further is I'm just going to put this into soak and wet block it and lay it out and dry this and see what happens and then if it still flicks in I'm going to have to go down and do a wider garter down the side um, which I'm hoping it's not <laughs> I've done enough reverse knitting <laughs> I don't want to do anymore <laughs> so yeah that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to put this into soak now and block that part of it just to see what happens so I'm hoping because I don't want didn't really want a wider band I just wanted really the band was just so it didn't curl round but I don't know if it's enough to stop it so um, yeah so a really simple scarf but um, yeah just with my colouring I just think it'd be nice perhaps not so much with the yellow <laughs> but with the blue and like I say my idea is that you won't see what's underneath because the, the scarf would be there with the blue coat. So I just think it'd be nice to have that pop of colour with the blue coat. So, yes, so I'm going to block this. And hmm, so after that plot twist, come back in a moment for the next thrilling episode. <laughs> The sheep were very unexpected. <laughs> I was a bit worried about them though because it is quite a fast road. It's called the Welsh Lane, but it's more than a, lane, a normal lane, country lane. Um, but it's still quite bendy, and we get a lot of the HS2 is destroying the landscape locally. Um, so we get lots of lorries coming through that we don't didn't used to have. And so I was worried about these one of these lorries coming hurtling around the corner and confronted with all those sheep. There's loads of them. There was the farmer and some people trying to get them organised, but obviously when they're just running down a road, I don't know how they did it. I was a bit worried for them. But when I came back to the village, there was no sign of anything and it didn't look like there'd been any carnage. So I was happy about that. But yeah, <laughs> I had a bit of an eventful trip because I had that and then all I wanted was some um, lobelia. I shall go and get them. I'm all out of breath now. <laughs> so I wanted some lobelia and what are they called? Trailing, 
the Belia and Trillium Petunias I wanted and Geranium for the front of the house. And I thought, since it's bank holiday weekend, all the flowers and bedding plants are going to be in for people. I'm still out of breath. <laughs> so um, I thought I'll go down to B&M because they have really good prices on their plants and get some of those. So I went there and they didn't have any lobelia. Well, they had a few lobelia that were dead, but they didn't have any lobelia. So I did get my trailing petunias there and it was two for 12 pounds so what is it the six in there so i've got those and then i got some geraniums oh the handle's just falling off and the six geraniums and they're like in a salmon pink color so they will be going in but because they didn't have any Lobelia, because I wanted Lobelia to come over the edges of the pots as well. And they didn't have, like I said, just had the dead ones. So I thought, well, Tesco's is just over the road. I'll nip over to Tesco's because they usually have quite a few on the outside. So I looked in there. All they had was a dark purple. And I thought, well, they're going to go with the Lobelia, not the Lobelia. They're going to go with the Petunia. So I don't want purple and purple. I want something to break it up. So I didn't get anything there. I've also want something for a bigger pot in the front as well. And I didn't know what I was looking for, but I wanted it to be evergreen. And so I thought, right, I'm just going to have to go to the garden centre and pay more, aren't I? <laughs> so I went to the garden centre and I got some lobelia there. I can't remember how much it was, but yeah, the six of the trailing lobelia there. And that's just a variety. So they should be nice, break it up a bit. So I've got those and then I saw in the bargain section that needs some loving care, one of these. I've got lots of these. I do love these in the garden. You, I'll put that, I can never say what it's called. <laughs> Let's make it the focus for you. So yeah, these just flower for so long. You can see the flowers there, but this is a lighter one. It's usually, oop. I've only got the darker purple ones, but these will, most of the year, it's got some flowers on. So I thought, right, I'll give you some love and care. So, um, yeah, I paid. I said, no, I don't need a receipt. Started walking back to the car and I thought, hold on, that was a bit expensive for what I got and I thought oh well I bet it wasn't half price because it didn't have a yellow label or anything over the barcode I thought I bet she's just zapped it and hasn't done half price on that one for me so I went back in and I had to get that swapped over and um, then when I was coming back yesterday when I was driving my car I went about how far did I go I went about 30 miles there and back and my clutch went twang about three times. I thought, oh, something wrong here. So I said to Gary last night, oh, can you take a look at my car at the weekend? Because there's a funny noise coming from the clutch. He's a trained mechanic, so hopefully he'll be able to fix it so it's not too expensive. But then when I went over to uh, B&M, it went a couple of times and then by the time I was coming back every single time I put my foot on the clutch it was going Dwang! and I thought oh no please don't go <laughs> so then I was trying to get home I just wanted to get home by this point because I thought oh no what's going to happen and then when I got to the turning off of the dual carriageway to go back onto the sheep lane <laughs> It was all sectioned off, so I thought, oh no, there has been carnage. But then I saw at the top of there, there was a lorry that was, something was going on. I thought, oh, it's just because it's blocked or something up there. So I thought, I hope I can get back the other way. So it's get to go five miles out of the way, go to the roundabout, come all the way back again to get up. And yeah, <laughs> and then I was home. So it was quite eventful for me thinking, oh yeah, I'll just pop out for half an hour and get the plants I want for the weekend. Yes, it didn't go quite to plan and now I don't think I dare go in the car at the moment. I think I'm just going to let Gary have a look at it first. 
So that is the plant section done unexpectedly. <laughs> so let's get back to the knitting. So I did block this, as you saw, and it's curling in again now because I've gone so much further than it was. But when I blocked it, this bottom section was staying nicely. So I am happy that with proper blocking, after I've finished, it will be fine. So I'm going to carry on. So I am now all the way, whoops, that far. So I'm about, yeah, it's about there. So I've got to go all the way around and back down again for the length I want. But yeah, I'm really enjoying doing it. It's nice to have such an easy project to do, just mindless and... <laughs> But Vixen's already got her eye on thinking, oh, there's going to be scraps here. And she's saying that as it's coming up for summer, she would like to have a bikini this year. Because last year, you may have seen the photo of her on holiday where she just had her knickers on and her arms folded. I'll see if I can find a picture and put it up. But she had her arms folded in front of her because she didn't have anything on the top. And she, yeah, she thought it was embarrassing and unladylike and so she wants a full bikini this year so I might make her a red bikini because she seems to think it will go well with her colouring. <laughs> I'm all getting in a tangle now. So at this point I think I should say goodbye for this week and I shall see you for more escapades next week. Take care, thanks for watching. <laughs>